Hello and welcome to this Business Spotlight interview. Um, I'm delighted today to be joined by Siobhan Courtney from Eventus Recruitment Group. Hi Siobhan, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. Looking forward to hearing about you, your, you and your, your, your story. So if you could um, start with just giving us some background on, you know, um, yourself and, you know, why the decision to get into business, how long that's been going on for, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so left university 100 years ago and um, became a prison officer, actually. Right. Um, I worked at Wormwood Scrubs in London and um, worked with men, predominantly lifers, and worked on a cognitive um, a cognitive course for them, which was to reduce impulsivity, which I always thought was quite ironic, Benny man, the majority of murderers are there because of an impulsive action. So did that and then started doing their recruitment for them realized I quite like the recruitment I went back and did a postgrad in business management so I applied for a job in the Guardian newspaper and it was to be a recruitment consultant I thought it was HR when I went for it so I applied for it got it realized it was very much a sales job so moved back up north in 2000 and worked for um, big recruitment firms and also smaller ones and it was always sort of managing teams etc cetera, etc cetera. In 2003, I had uh, my first child and in 2001, I had my first child, sorry, and then um, got diagnosed with cancer just after she was born. So um, in my leg, I mean, who gets cancer in the leg? And um, went back to work. They were completely inflexible with the hours I did. I was incredibly poorly, got well and all that malarkey, but incredibly inflexible with um, being a parent of a small child whilst also trying to get over cancer. So I thought this is an absolute ridiculous malarkey. So eventually I got around to setting up on my own. So I was going into business with James Kahn from Dragon's Den. Oh, right. Um, right. And so he wanted to invest uh, a million pound and set up this fabulous recruitment firm. And at the time, I was by this point, I was a single parent. And all the way through the process, which is a fabulous process, and he's, it, the company he runs is just exemplary it's amazing but all the way through this process they kept mentioning that they didn't want a lifestyle business they wanted you know to very much take over the world and I was going to head it up so mm -hmm. as this carried on going on and he, he kept mentioning this don't want this lifestyle business I thought I actually do want this lifestyle business so I didn't go with him I set up with another firm and then had another child and then moved away from that firm and set up on my own so that's when events recruitment group or Ventus legal as it was then was made did it on my own for a few years, sort of paid the bills, did it from my, you know, spare bedroom type thing. And about seven or eight years ago, I started, so relatively new, even though the business has been going since 2009, the sort of a development of it only started sort of seven or eight years ago and um, got my first employee, which was actually my sister. So that worked really well. She was with me up until a couple of years ago where she decided she wanted to make cakes rather than recruitment. Can't really blame her. So then I started developing the business. So at that point, we all worked from home. Right. Um, because I thought this was before COVID and I thought oh, that's the way to do it. You know, people want to work from home. And then I realised that people actually didn't want to work from home at that point. And recruiters by nature are quite gobby and like to be surrounded by people. So I first set up the office in Lancaster and then set up a further office in Cheshire. So we have some here, some in Cheshire and people who do still work from home. So 25 years I've been doing legal recruitment. We do legal finance and HR and from here. So, Wow. Will wins tour of uh, of of why we're here. So 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 many things I could ask questions about, but I guess with, I know, with yes. stuff, uh, yeah. So with the business stuff, really interesting. Kind of how tough a decision was it not to go with someone, obviously with with that kind of background, like James. You know, you talk about you know what, what was the real drive? Was it just that you just felt at that time just a gut feel, or you just felt like that that's what you went to do? It was gut feel, and I was scared. Um, <laughs> Because I just think the amount of time he would want from me to do this mm. and the amount of money. I mean, this is back in 2007-ish. Right. So, or maybe 2008, I can't remember. It was around that time. And I just thought, I've got a small child who pretty much needs me. My health was okay. Mm. But, you know, do I really want to put that much pressure on myself? Yeah. And I just thought, I'm, I don't actually want to take over the world. Thanks. I'm quite happy. Not plodding mm. at all, mm. but it just wasn't the right time. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I walked away. So it actually wasn't, and I've never regretted it for one moment. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, yeah, wow. Well, yeah, I mean, fair play. And, and and I guess you kind of, yeah, you've you've evolved your business at the pace that you wanted to, 
evolve it out rather than that external kind of feeling of and I'm not yeah. very good at being told what to do so I think I think actually like you know if I had a VC as well in the background I think I'd be useless and mm-hmm. so I think that was a main element of it as well great so what is it about you you know what you do at the moment that you enjoy the most um well there's loads of things I mean some days to go oh my god I've been doing this job 25 years but then I come into the office I'm so lucky with my team mm. um the, the the thing that we've always had an issue with actually is getting the right recruitment consultants because mm. you know the stereotypical recruitment consultant is what I dislike intensely you know mm. the the flash don't care what they do how they do it as long as they make money that's the alien to us and it's exactly the opposite of what we are right. so to get people who who have that same ideal and have the thorough training that we do we don't just Mm. bang cvs over we do so much work with the candidates and so much work with our clients so the difficulty is that so when we have the people in the office that are aligned with what we feel it's just great and i still get a buzz last night i placed a candidate in um in a really good law firm in london i was on the phone to at nine o'clock and you know and she's been offered so i still get that buzz of knowing that i found somebody a job I was Mm. up in um, a shop in Lancaster a few years ago and a husband of somebody I placed came up to me in pets at home and said, you know, thank you for giving me my wife back because she's now happy and that's because of you. So it sounds a bit twee and a bit ridiculous, but it's true. That's what I still get excited about. And also as well, it's, you know, it's nice when we're making profit, obviously. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, business. Helps. business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah, you need to be making the profit to to get the, the yeah. It's <laughs> caught me old fashioned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so how big is the team you've got? So, how many people have you got working for you in in the different? Locations? So only little. There's only ten of us. There's only ten of us. We are looking to expand. Um, and you know, there's the three options. There's Lancaster. There's there's Wormslow, and there's Homework, and there's Hybrid as well. So obviously, right. Okay. Um. So you know, th- there's all those options. But again, you know, the problem we have found is when we've taken people on who have recruitment experience or a decent amount of recruitment experience, it still shocks me and my director, who's been doing the job um about fifteen years, how mm. shoddy the training is in our industry, right? And how lack of in depth and knowledge they get trained. And it really is, you know, throw it at a wall and see how much sticks. So, mm. you know, we have made mistakes and got people who have, you know, from big recruiters and they they just can't do the job. Right. So we're looking to expand, but it's got to be with the right people. Um, excitingly, we have just been given funding from the Department of International Trade to set up in Ireland. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, so we are in the process of doing that. When I say right. set up initially, we'll run it from here and then put an office right. there. Right. Um in error so and my mum was Irish and unfortunately I lost my mum last year so it's in oh. homage to her so and obviously with a name like Siobhan um sure. I've got like 150 stupid cousins out there that will all help me out so yeah it's really exciting so, I know that thing my mum's Irish as well so I have a, a big contingent there's here. loads of them yeah <laughs> there's a lot yeah <laughs> There's a lot, yeah, a lot to be You've got your Irish passport, most importantly. Yeah, well, yeah, and no, I need to get that sorted as well. But, and me uh, too, I haven't done it either. Yeah, it might travel a little bit easier, but anyway, it's a very, yeah. very different subject. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so how, you talk about obviously the importance of bringing the right people in. So how do you go about doing that? What is it, you know, what is it you do to ensure you bring in that, you know, that right quality of individual you're looking for? Yeah, so we have we use um, a system called the McQuakes. I don't know if you've ever used it, where um, it's like um, you know, ask lots of questions. It's, a, it's about culture fit. So we fit, we put in the questions, what we need them to answer, and make sure there is a culture fit. It's not one hundred percent accurate, and no. um, we have, but it is, it's, it's pretty much there. Um, I'm a bit of a nightmare with gut feeling. Um, right. Whereas my director is the level headed one, and she asks the proper questions, and I just tend to be gut feeling. Um, we get it right sometimes we get it wrong sometimes as well so mm-hmm. it's more main it's mainly my obsession is and all recruiters say it but I generally mean it is integrity you mm-hmm. know so I ask the questions that will outline what they would do you know what would you do if you had a candidate who did this this and this just yeah. to try and make sure that they would be in line with our our thoughts here okay Brilliant. it's not easy it's no. not easy I mean <laughs> which is why we're not on 20 staff yeah well yeah I mean uh, I think any business you know one of the biggest challenges when i talk to any business owner is is recruitment it's just getting people in which is yeah, yeah ironic that i'm a recruiter and yeah. can't recruit for myself i think it says yes but i think it just demonstrates where the job market is at the moment across 
yeah. across the UK, right? It's um, it's a it's a challenge in in, in any industry. Yeah. To get the, and we have right, just invest. Right sorry, sorry, it's just saying it's the right quality. Said, we have, yeah, we have just invested in a, a new training program as well. So that's right. the, that one of our staff's gone through that. It needs tweaking as all these things do. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's it's a very good basis for what we need to get them through the training program because. You know, again, horror stories we hear about recruiters who they've gone through a job. They're literally given a candidate's candidates and a client database. Crack on. You know, there's no, right. which is probably why we're, you know, we're not very well thought of in an industry of, of work. You know, the amount of times I've heard us being referred to as an industry as necessary evil um, mm. is, is quite staggering, which is a shame, really, because we should be working as business partners and not just bums mm. on seats. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, businesses, yeah, especially the, the in the areas that you're recruiting for, I guess you know, quality of the yeah. candidate is 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 vital. It's huge. And, yeah, um, and that comes from yeah, you you guys are one providing the, the candidates, right? So you guys need to understand what yeah. the, what the client's looking for. So how much interaction do you have with client? I mean, do you build up relationships with clients over a long? Oh, period loads. Of time? Yeah, loads. So we very much we we sort of do it on a small scale. We're not mm. one of these like I mean I do have quite a large geographic, but there's only probably a few f- firms in those. And right. because we do retained headhunt as well, we have the basis that we will not. And it sounds so obvious as from a moral standard, but so many recruitment firms don't do it. If we recruit for a firm, we don't take out, which sounds so basic and it should be right. the norm. But you'd be amazed how much horror stories we hear. So mm. we do. We very much have a small amount of firms because obviously, if you're recruiting for everybody then mm. you can't because we do a lot of headhunt how can we have firms that we don't have anyone to take out of if we're recruiting yeah. for them um so you know things like for example an office in lancaster um i set up the whole office a few years ago during covid actually and so you know and so filled that office that's one of the main law firms in lancaster for example so we don't just we don't and you know we don't just put bums on seats we do no. all of that okay. so from, you... you know, big partners i do the senior stuff which is what i prefer to do Okay, cool. So, and in terms of the the culture you're trying to create in your business, what what is it about? How do you try and retrain? Yeah, you know, what is it you, you feel is important to retain? If you find great people, how how do you go about ensuring you retain those for a, a period of time? With decent time. Yeah, loads of things. We have loads of incentives. We've just been to been doing cookery courses in Manchester. I took them all to mm-hmm. Edinburgh last year in London as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we also um do confidential interviews with or um assessments. What do you call them? assessment type things um right. to the staff um okay. twice a year to right. make sure they're happy with everything we re-evaluated the benefit system this year and gave them what they wanted apart from somebody wanted a duvet day once a month i wasn't going to say okay to that um but yeah so we make sure we have monthly reviews as well to make sure not only with they're on target with what they're trying to do but how we can help make them if they're not mm. our staff retention is really good actually i'm yeah. really proud of that yeah. um and we all genuinely, it's a bit sounds like the Waltons, but we genuinely like each other, which I think is super rare. And that's, you know, I've worked for recruitment firms and other other industries mm. where there's always that horror that causes the hassle. Um, genuinely never had that. So we're super lucky. And how do you how do you create that? Because you talk about the two offices, you've got one in Chester, one in Lancaster. How do you keep the team together in that sense? Because they're working different. Is there a yeah. cross over there in a way or? yeah massive crossover so we have a we have a morning meeting the home workers as we call them they all have their separate meeting and then the two offices have their meeting every day quick 20 minute call in the morning we also have a full team meeting once a week we all go to the other offices all the time so everyone goes and works in the other offices Uh um, and we get together once a quarter as an office as the whole business um but it is, it's just, I mean, the person who heads up the Cheshire office for me, I've known her 23 years. Right. So okay. we worked together 20 odd years ago. So, you know, it's all, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it works really well, actually. And mm. if anybody ever, because as well, because for example, in the Lancaster office, one of my consultants client base is Cheshire. Right. As well. So Manchester okay. and stuff. So she'll, if she's going to visit clients, she'll go and work out in Wormslow for the day and vice versa. Right. Okay, perfect. So as you've got a great setup and yeah, looking after your team and building that kind of those relationships and, and inclusivity yeah. and everything like that, all the kind of really great things that create great teams, right? Which are you know, yeah, fantastic. I'm really oh, proud of them. 
Yeah, no, you should be. Um, it's, yeah, it's impressive what you've done. You know, and, and and just I would like to focus a bit more on that kind of obviously talk about the future and obviously you've got the 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 opportunity to expand into into the island market. What what do you feel the challenges on that are going to be for you? You know, over say the next kind of eighteen months, two years. Time. I don't know if your children used to watch Peppa Pig, but um, I'm constantly referred to as Rabbit. You know, one day she's helicopter pilot, then she's the ambulance driver, and then right. she's. So you know, I, th I think time for me, and and right. I I am a nightmare for getting really giddy about something, and okay. then doing it, and then forgetting about the other stuff I'm supposed to be doing as well. My poor right. director pulls her hair out at me all the time. So, and um, that's that would be the main thing for me is is the time to make sure because I still run the business and I'm still a fee earner. And mm. it would be the right thing for me to do to do the island side. Right. Um, the the law is pretty much transferable, so I'm not concerned about that. Yeah. The way that it's um, you know, the, the way that they would recruit, I think, would be pretty much the same. Mm. Um, so I'm going over at the end of the month to spend a couple of days over there to start okay. the ball rolling. So it'd be time, if anything. Oh, cool. okay. And then is it going to be? Is it? Are you looking at, so you talk about islands, I, I guess, are you talking Dublin or is it, does it across the whole, where where are you looking to? South? It'll be the south, obviously, because yeah. yeah, it's yeah. classed as international if it's the south. So it'll be error. Yeah. So it won't right. be Northern Ireland at all. Right, um, okay. So it will, I'll probably start at, when I say Dublin, it's a bit like saying I'll set up in England, start in London, isn't it? So yeah. um, I probably will, you know, concentrate on the, the counties around Dublin. So Waterford, oh. Cork, Mayo, all those. Right. Okay. I think Mayo's up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so all of those as well, just oh, so that okay. you're not concentrating fully on Dublin. Because yeah, yeah. Um, and what what made you decide Ireland out of interest? Um, because I want an international offering. Right. Okay. And I an era is classed as international, but yeah. they work pretty much. I mean, I did look at America, um, right. but it was a look at. Um, Department of International Trade said that they would they they would offer me um, some money for that as well, but it just seemed like too much of a jump, and I didn't have the time mm. or the capacity to do that. Whereas Ireland yeah. seems it's literally an hour on the plane. Yeah, the yeah. time's the same. The only yeah. main difference really is that the law is slightly different, and the money tree is different, obviously. So, mm. yeah, yeah. they run on uh, Euro, don't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. I'm sure you know what you've achieved so far. You'll uh, you'll you'll smash it over there and and you know build the business up Hopefully. as well. Cool. Um, so, just reflecting on kind of your business journey so far, what would you say is your biggest learning or biggest learning since you've been a business owner? Um, I think I've got thicker skinned. Right. Um, I think I'm still probably too soft, actually. Um, it's quite interesting, actually, because before I came on this, there's two of my staff in today, that's all, in this office. And I said to them, say two words that would describe me. Right. Um, I won't tell you what's, what couple of them <laughs> the words were, but the clean ones were um, meticulous, which I loved, actually. Right. Flexible. Um what was the other ones? Um, generous, and then she said too generous, which again is going back to that. Okay. And I can't remember what the other words she said was, but it. So I asked them what they felt it was mm. because to give me an idea. So what I've learned really is not to take things too personally. Right. If somebody left me initially, I was devastated and right. took it personally. Um, so I've slightly got better at that. Thankfully, most people don't leave, but you know, it's, mm. life changes, doesn't it? People are mm. going to leave. Cool. So I have got. Just to be thicker skinned, um, I think I'm still not great at it. Right. Um, I just buy into people so much that if it's sometimes not reciprocated as much as I'd like it to be, which it wouldn't be because it's not their business. No. And uh, yeah, that's the hardest thing for me, I think. So, but being a business owner and, and people not maybe you feeling they care as much as you do about something is, is that what you? No, no, it's just if they live. Sounds like I'm like a psychopathic right. killer, but it's you know when people just say, <laughs> you know, do you know what I'm off? I'm like, yeah. right, okay. uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, business is yeah, it's hard not sometimes when it is your own business as well, and you care passionately about something, and someone then you know does leave for whatever reason. You know, it, yeah, yeah. Like how can you? Insult, yeah, but you know, like you say, ultimately, uh, 
people have different you know things happen and life changes i know and... it's not like some sort of dictatorship that i can't keep people here but uh but yeah i think, I think that's I've, I've definitely got more resilient to to that um yeah. but that's definitely been my hardest bit is that yeah great and then so looking at um you know if you're talking to someone you know a young person who's looking to start up in business on their own what would be your best bit you know your best advice for them if they were looking to do that make sure you've got a cash flow i think as it's you know as obvious as it sounds you know yeah. we are so lucky in that you know we, we've never had we've never had a penny in the business um mm. which i think is what my colleague said about me being meticulous i'm very open and transparent with the team as well about money mm. um make sure you've got a decent contingent cash flow because some people don't pay the bills on time no. and the difference it makes to a business is huge especially when you've got employees mm. it's just make sure you've got um a contingency there for cash flow is how i would yeah. definitely what i'd say and do your due diligence obviously yeah thoroughly 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 do it yeah, yeah no great advice i think you know ideas are fantastic but they've got to keep, got to be commercially viable uh, ideas right that's that's the big and yeah ultimately like you say cash flow is the killer of so many businesses the yeah. great so yeah. many businesses yeah biggest challenge you face and 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 know, knowing the numbers as well i think is is when it kind of comes into that as well because some people are a little bit blind to what it means and yeah what it to. so yeah no some good yeah stuff. good stuff um and then like this question because it just kind of from a personal perspective or business whichever you know what inspires you or who inspires you or is inspiring you at the moment um my age <laughs> <laughs> you know i've got loads to do and not much time to do it i'm yeah. old okay. um so um no um my team my yeah. team are just ace yeah i genuinely think they're fabulous um mm. so they Def, they oh that was actually what the other word was was my colleague said inspirational which I thought was quite sweet um so yeah my team and their dedication to us as a business they they inspire me constantly mm. um so yeah probably them brilliant quite like my children as well well yeah that we all <laughs> but uh, yeah um but no it's great that the team yeah because I think it, when you're inspired by people around you and you're around them a lot Kind all of self, the time yeah yeah yeah. It, it makes a massive difference to to your mate because you know i'm sure as an owner there are days when you're having challenges you know not just from a work at time you know, about things that happening on that on that day but obviously being yeah. hit stuff you know it, it's great to have people around you that you can find that motivation from and, and know that what you're trying to do is because you're not just affecting yourself you're affecting a lot of other people as well right which is um yeah absolutely cool um so yeah, so thanks so far for what you said. I mean, is there anything obviously you mentioned about the the, the island expansion, but is there any other news or anything else you'd like to to you know to make people aware of about your business at the moment? I think one thing we've done recently over the last sort of two or three years is is going for awards, which um yep. was actually recommended to me by Action Coach, would you believe? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so we were, we were told to sort of start putting ourselves out there. Mm. And at first I was a bit cynical thinking, no, don't want to do that. Um, and it has made a massive difference. It's made a big difference to exposure. It's made a dif big difference to looking at your business and seeing how you can make that better because of the questions they ask you in order to be, um, sort of shortlisted and then finalized mm. and et cetera. So it has been a really good thing for us to do. It's quite expensive though, I would say, because mm. you have to go to all these, these, dues on the night which are yeah, so yeah. expensive but you know we've won a few and we've been finalists for a few so definitely the exposure is there so mm. i would definitely suggest that people go for that good stuff and bit of self we we do our, we do award ceremony every year at bizx conferences and the the um, yeah, so the positivity and the motivation you see the guys that are winning the awards and just yeah. reflecting on because people you know i think from your perspective you know as a business owner sometimes you you don't realize what a good job you are doing because you haven't got anyone telling you exactly that, that. The awards the awards yeah. kind of make you reflect on what you're doing and say oh hang on yeah i've done a really great job here and you know we're we're building a it's good for the team around as well yeah, yeah absolutely. it's good for the team around yeah, yeah and i've been no. i'm usually a judge on these things so i was always like you know really anyway mm. <laughs> so i did go in for them so seeing it from the other side as well it's been really good it has been that's, really good that's a, that's a really good yeah really good bit of advice yeah something that we you know 
as you say, we would recommend because it's an opportunity just to like I say, for, on so many great ways of recognizing the, the business and the people that are in the business as well. So, yeah. Yeah, great definitely. Stuff. Right. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for letting My pleasure. Me and your, um, you know, your background, your story, really interesting. And, and obviously your business is, is flying and, you know, best of luck for, for the future and the expansion Thank in you. international territories. And uh, yeah. No, no. Good luck of Ireland. Yes, indeed. Great stuff. All right, Sean. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Yes, bye.